Volcanogenic Massive Sulfide Deposit Definition These ore deposits are defined on the basis of four major characteristics. Number one, the special and temporal relationship to volcanism and volcanic rocks. The massive ore is stratoborne or stratiform or nearly so and greater than 60% sulfide minerals. Number three, the ores are composed of the elements zinc, copper, and lead, with minor but significant amounts of gold and silver. Number four, the ore deposits form at or near the seawater, rock, or sediment interface with deposition from a hot hydrothermal fluid. Near the seafloor, because there are VMS deposits, where the ore and alteration minerals replace volcanic deposits that have high porosity. The term massive, when applied to the ore, means it consists of 60% or greater by weight of sulfide minerals. Importance From both a practical and a purely scientific perspective, VMS deposits occupy a unique position of importance among mineral deposit types. Practical they are a major source of copper, zinc, lead, silver, and gold, a significant source of cobalt, tin, cadmium, tellurium, bismuth, germanium, galerium, and barium. Some also contain mineable mercury, antimony, and arsenic. For this reason, these deposits are called polymetallic ore deposits because they are mined for a variety of elements. Thus, they remain a very desirable kind of deposit to explore for because they give a company some protection from the fluctuating price of different metals. They are a significant source of gold. Scientific They occur with volcanic rocks dated at 3.4 by old and are currently forming on the modern seafloor. In that regard, they have probably been forming as long as volcanoes have been erupting. They gives us evidence for and of near uh, early plate tectonic processes, start and evolution of life, evolution of the atmosphere, and ore forming processes through time. There are natural uh, laboratories for we can see them forming today. Grade and tonnage. Tonnage. There are over 850 deposits worldwide and they range from lenses of 200,000 tons to giant deposits containing more than 150 million tons. Among the largest are Rio Tinto with 1.5 billion tons, Kid Creek with 140 million tons, Giko, 866 million ton, Horn with 20, 52 million ton and so on. Grades. The grades of the deposits vary considerably and this appears to be a function of temperature of the hydrothermal fluid. Amount of magmatic input, environment of information and a kind of host rocks. Tectonic setting. We miss deposits form anywhere there is volcanism in a subaqueous environment. This includes ocean floor divergent zones, island arcs, and bake arcs. Many VMS deposits have probably been destroyed by subduction-driven tectonic activity. There may be some deposits such as Kid Creek that are associated with mantle plumes. Continental bake arc settings contain the world's most economically important VMS districts. The most common local environments of formation are along gravens and within and along the edges of both caldrons and calderas. Most large deposits are associated with calderas because of such local settings, VMS deposits tend to occur in clusters. What are caldrons? Large bowl shaped volcanic depression more than one kilometer in diameter and rimmed by infacing scops. Ore types. We must deposits contain two kinds of ore. 
each of which is distinguished on the basis of sulfide content and the relationship of the ore to the volcanic stratigraphy. The two types are massive and a stringer or wind ore. Number one, massive. Massive ore consists of greater than 60% sulfide minerals and is stratobound or stratiform. Stringer. Stringer ore contains less than 20% sulfides by weight and a cross cut stratigraphy. Massive ore. Occurs parallel to the attitude of the enclosing rock types with sharp, almost knife like contacts with the hanging wall rocks and gradational contacts with the foot wall rocks. Stratigraphic thickness of the massive ore varies from less than 0.3 meters to more than 100 meters. With the strike length of the ore greater than the width and much greater than the thickness, tons of meters wide and hundreds of meters in strike length. For example, at Kid Creek, the massive ore is 40 meters thick, 160 meters wide, and 800 meters long. Much of the ore is truly massive, that is, featureless, but parts of the ore body may contain banded or layered ore. This banding or layer, layering can be due to, number one, different sulfide minerals, number two, sulfide silicate minerals, number three, grain size differences, number four, replacement. The layering is due to three different causes, number one, Replacement, which occurs due to the flow of hydrothermal fluid through the forming massive or resulting in a remobilization of previously deposited metals along temperature and chemical gradients. These tend to be perpendicular to the seawater interface. This process results in what has been called ore refining and it results in a deposit with a chalcopyrite pyrotite, pyrite core, and a splerite galena pyrite outer zone. In extreme cases, much of the best metal and precious metal content can be remobilized out of the sulfide deposit and carried by the fluids up into the overlying seawater. In this case, you end up with a barren pyrite body with maybe a thin base metal enriched outer margin. Recrystallization during metamorphism. Number three, sedimentation, which is associated with a cloud like brine in a depression on the seafloor or is due to plume fallout. Stringer ore. The stringer ore always occurs on the foot wall side of the massive ore and has a total sulfide content that seldom exceeds 20% by weight. The ore zone consists of stock work like winds as well as port like to cloud like replacement of the host rock. The stringer zone is roughly perpendicular to the massive ore and thus X cuts stratigraphy. It narrows with depth and grades upwards into the massive ore. There are VMS deposits that contain only massive ore and others that contain only stringer ore. Stringer ore only could be a result of erosion or the water depth was too shallow and the fluid simply boiled away. Massive ore only is more problematic but could be due to plume fallout, slumping and sliding away from areas of formation or precipitation from a brine pool. Mineralogy of the ore. Ore mineralogy is similar to both massive and stringer ore, though zinc and lead contents are much higher in the copper lower in the massive ore. Iron sulfides, pyrite and pyrotide compose more than 50% of the massive ore and it can make up 9 to 100%. Sphalerite, galena, and chalcopyrite occur in widely varying amounts, and these three minerals make up most of the rest of the sulfides. 
mineralogy of the earth. Minor minerals, some of which are economic to recover, include tetrahedrite, native gold, argentite, cassiterite, snebar, stebnite, arsenopyrite, gold tellurites, barite, bismuthite, and bornite. The iron content of the sphalerite is highly variable, so it varies from honey yellow to black jake in color. Often the sphalerite is cadmium cardium enriched.